Our familiar number system is base 10, so in contrast to addition in base 4, the 10 for 1 trade is harder to draw. Now we'll begin using our abstract numbers symbols to represent the amounts, but it's important to remember that they represent the number of units, so we'll continue for now to use the place value chart. Now because our number system is base 10, we actually have names for the higher units, and we typically say that the smallest unit is a 1, 10 ones make a 10, 10 tens make a 100, 10 hundreds make a 1,000, and if we're writing a number in base 10, we'll omit the base designator. So what we used to write as 1, 3, 5, base 10, we'll write as 1, 3, 5 without indicating the base. Moreover, we'll read the number using the unit names. And so this number should be 100, 3 tens, 5. What's that? What do you mean 30? So let's talk about the names of the numbers. We also have the familiar names for the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And the number after 10 should be called 10 and 1. However, in defiance of logic and sensibility, we call it 11. And so this brings up an important idea. Always distinguish between the easy and the familiar. So it might seem strange and unnecessarily difficult to call the number after 10, 10 and 1. Why not call it 11? That's easier. Well, actually it isn't. It's familiar. And so the thing to remember is that every new number word is something that must be learned and memorized. So calling the number after 10, 11 requires remembering a new word. It also loses the connection to the fact that it is the number after 10. Remember, how you speak influences how you think. In contrast, calling it 10 and 1 is both logical and retains the connection. So if we counted logically, we'd count 10 and 1, 10 and 2, 10 and 3, 10 and 4, 10 and 5, 10 and 6, 10 and 7, 10 and 8, 10 and 9, 10 and 10. Now, we can make one further modification. This last one, 10 and 10, would actually make more sense as two tens. And again, this might seem unnecessarily difficult. Why not call it 11, 12, 13, and so on? And again, always distinguish between easy and familiar. It's familiar that we count 11, 12, 13, but it's not easy. We have to remember all of these new names. In contrast, if we count like this, we don't have to remember any new names, and we retain the connection. And in fact, by way of comparison, let's consider the following. In Chinese, the numbers from 1 through 10 are, in my mangled Mandarin, yi, er, san, Qi, wu, liu, qi, ba, jie, xi. The number after xi, 10, is xi yi, 10 and 1. Then comes xi er, xi san, and so on, up to xi jiao, 10 and 9, which is followed by er xi two tens. And what this means is that once you can count to 10 in Chinese, you can count to 20. In contrast, in English, you need to know 20 different words to count to 20. Actually, it gets better. Once you know these 10 words and the naming convention, you can count as high as 9 tens and 9, what we might call 99. And again, in comparison, in English, you need 27 different words to count that far. And Korean, Japanese, and several other languages have a similar structure to their number words, making the numbering much easier. Now remember, how you speak influences how you think, 
And if we read numbers this way, this will help us think about numbers in a useful manner. So let's read the numbers by specifying the number of each type of unit. So this number might be called 12, but we don't want to read it that way because 12 doesn't tell us anything useful. This is actually 110 and two ones. Similarly, this number, two tens and four ones, and this is one ten and one one. So why is it useful to read numbers this way? Well, suppose we wanted to add these three numbers together. If we read these as 12, 24, and 11, it's not really clear how we can add them. But if we read them as what they are, this is one ten and two ones, this is two tens and four ones, and this is one ten and one one. And remember, arithmetic is bookkeeping. So if we add them by combining the sets, we see that all together we have four tens and seven ones, which we can write this way, and that gives us our addition. And what's important here is you can actually do this mentally. One ten two ones, two tens four ones, one ten one one, that's one two and one four tens, and two four and one seven ones. Now we might call this mental arithmetic, but what we're really doing is we're talking our way through to the answer. So we might add these numbers mentally. This number is one hundred and three ones. This number is two tens and one one. And this number is one ten and three ones. Arithmetic is bookkeeping. We set here all together. We have one hundred, three tens, and seven ones, which we can write this way. 